Yep. So the uh, today is um, March eighth, two thousand twenty-three. We're at the administration building, school committee conference room for the facilities and operations subcommittee. Uh, can we have a roll call? Mr. Hart. Here. Ms. Larvey. Here. Ms. Perot. Here. Salute to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> the uh, open meeting law, pursuant to the open <coughs> meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived by those present, and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. So uh, today we have three items on the agenda. We're gonna take them out of order. We're gonna go to um, the discussion vote to refer re uh, renewal of the lease for the Fall Youth uh, Soccer Association 3.02. And um, we have a representative here. And Ken, do you want to get into uh, just to be started off a little bit? Or? Sure. So um, we have the agreement from last year, a one-year agreement um, that we that the committee voted to make a one-year agreement as opposed to a five-year, which was what we originally thought we were going to do, um, to see if there would be any changes within a year on the status of, of taking care of the field. Um, it, it, there was some, some uh, movement that the field was going to be maintained um, by the league. And obviously, um, COVID changed a lot of things um, you know, for uh, a lot of organizations as to uh, you know, funds and, and um, the amount of uh, work that, that they could take on on their own. So we <coughs> executed a one-year contract and um, we're, we're prepared to do either or, um, whatever uh, works for the for youth. But I do have a document that, you, that, I, that is included in your package, which is identical to yes, the sir. last one. Yeah. Yes, okay. identical to the last one. And um, you can use that one. And the only difference is that I changed the date. So the, new, the current contract expires in May, and this one picks up in May. Of 23 and runs to June of, of 24, and then at that point we will, uh, you know, work on it again. Right. So, yeah, yeah. No, yep. Sorry. Sure. No problem. Any, um, so, Kenny, it's accurate to say that the only thing that changed last time was we took over the, the cutting of the grass, right? For the not this so much contract, but last year's contract. Right? Yes, so the end of the, the exactly. Okay. Yeah, Thank so you. we're not we're taking over. The, right. There's really last year's and this year's. The date is the only change. Yep, I, I noticed that. Yeah. And, and the, yeah. and the contract is. Um, did everything go well with that? We had no issues on, from no, our side. No issues, and I'm here to just request the same field usage and the mowing, and we will take care of the nutrients and um, the sprinklers and things like that. So everything's intact except for the dates. Exactly. Okay. Is there any other questions? Nope. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, to refer. Motion to refer. Yes. Sorry. Second. Yeah. Roll call. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Larvey? Yes. Ms. Pereira? Yes. Thank you very much. So, so this will go on the next agenda, which okay. is going to be on March 20th for a full approval. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so um, for the next one item is 3.01, the facilities and operations uh, for the update on the man murals. Uh, Ken, do you want to go into it a little bit and then we're going to have the uh, presentation? Sure. Hi. Yeah, so it, it's um, obviously the, the um, we've had some changes at 290. Um, our, our roof, so yeah. since the last time we talked, our roof was replaced. Um, our roof wasn't the issue, you know. Uh, and we were concerned with that very much as to what damage could possibly be done. Um, the, um, some, of the, some of the forensic work you had already uh, done, Mr. Rodericks, as far as the initial The way initial back. work, exactly. but subsequent to your work, yes, which was uh, terrific uh, because when I first came before 
the committee in 2015, uh, we were concerned with water damage, and that is alleviated. Yes. As a result of that, my efforts to get any funding after that through the CPC um, had been eliminated because the water damage wasn't there. All right, so the CPC position is that there is no danger. Uh, the question then becomes, we have a conundrum here, because we have a world-class WPA uh, collection of artwork in a room that nobody goes into. And if they were restored, they still would not be seen. So to restore them, I believe, is a waste of money. And the CPC sees restoration as restoring what's on the wall. Right. That's restoration. What I'm suggesting, and which Jackie Francisco also suggested, in 2018, second handout with my report on the chimes was that digital reproduction was recommended. The CPC does not see digital reproduction as restoration by law. I mean, this isn't made up. Right. This is guidance from the CPC in Boston that says restoration means this, <coughs> reproduction means this. So digital reproduction is not going to be funded by the CPC. Right. And I'm recommending digital reproduction. Jackie Francisco is recommending digital reproduction. During the pandemic, I was able to sneak some people in and I got uh, the uh, Blackburn Conservation people. <coughs> they do cleaning. They do cleaning. At the time, I wanted to get an estimate of what it would cost to do cleaning mm -hmm. as well as digital. That was what Blackburn gave me that day. Just later on, I was able to contact Tricolor from New Bedford. And he came in, the gentleman came in, and he looked at what we had in the auditorium. And he <coughs> said, digital reproduction <coughs> will enhance what you have. You don't need to clean them. Why? Because the original assessment was that the murals are in excellent condition. Why? Because they're in an auditorium without any sun and temperature controlled. So we have a product there that's in good condition. We just have to keep the lights off. <laughs> and, nobody, and the weather out and people out of it. <laughs> yeah, that nobody sees. Exactly. And if, if Dana Bonds was here tonight, she would tell you, as we've been talking, uh, the great interest there is in these murals uh, at the WPA level nationwide. Dana has her own WPA collection right up here on the Art Association, and she's working with the Smithsonian. <clears throat> I've had interest from the Smithsonian. I've had interest from the Library of Congress. I've had interest from the state of Massachusetts. The bottom line is, Florida has an art co collection that is the largest WPA collection in the United States that nobody sees and nobody can get into. And if, you, and if you restore it, it's a waste of money. So I looked into the digital reproduction and I got, I got Tricolor from New Bedford and Artopedia 
to look at, at this situation. Why did I look at those two companies and not just photographers locally? Because digital reproduction is a highly skilled process. Uh, these companies actually get certified to do this kind of work, and especially Tricolor and Autopedia, they've had experience doing large products, and our products are 3,515 feet, linear feet. Fortunately, the good news is that they're only one-third the size of New Bedford, which I'm going to give you out tonight. Uh, New Bedford in 2017 had this wonderful exhibit, which I attended. Um, it was done in the 19th century. They've been restoring this for years. It's a canvas restoration. Three times the size of what we have in the auditorium on Rock Street. When they finished the restoration, they did digital reproduction. Why? Because they can't carry around all this canvas right. and they can't exhibit it. When I attended the exhibition, exhibition, it was at the Kilburn Mill in New Bedford mm -hmm. and it was circular in the mill. It was up and down, up and down because it was so big. So that's what New Bedford did. And I believe in looking at what other people have done. I mean, this isn't, this isn't my idea. This, this is your property. This is property owned by the city of Fall River. So New Bedford has done digital reproductions. I'm going to give you these brochures mm -hmm. so you can look at the intense work that was done there. The closest that we can come to digital reproduction is Autopedia in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, they're from Massachusetts, but uh, the work was done for <coughs> Rhode Island Historical Society. Also, they were able to do large scale work. And I'm going to hand this out to you so you can see what kind of work is done with digital. Um, for example, this is the kind of scan that they did. One for Debbie. No, thank you. The chairman here. They did the scan, and you can notice in the footnote that it was 20 feet by 15 canvas, 72 separate images. And what they do with imaging is take multiple images, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of images, and then they stitch them together to create this large canvas. So once they did that, of this, there are 36, there are 36 pages to this, but I copied three to give you an idea of what, in, what was entailed. Once they did that, they did a digital restoration and they created this beautiful product. So I'm suggesting that we look at digital reproduction and that we look at this as a total product, not just canvas or print, uh, because it's going to be all different sizes. Once you do the digital work, you're in a position to change sizes. You could exhibit them at Derby High School. You could ca create canvases. Um, who knows, for the waterfront. I'm still looking for a building. <laughs> so if I find a building and they want large sizes, uh, you could actually create large sizes because these murals are telling the Fall River story. 
they're not only a legacy for the future, but they're telling the floor of the story, and they could easily be a tourist attraction. But in the meantime, digital reproductions can be created to teach at Durfee or any other place uh, in the school system. You can create um, a slide presentation. You could do a, a book. Um, it's, it's limitless. It's limitless on what qualified subject matter people can tell me what to do, because I'm not one of them. Uh, Jackie Francisco is. Somebody who's in the artwork will be able to tell you what the full <coughs> range capability is of digital reproductions. So I come to this meeting tonight um, with the work that's been done already. I can tell you that this is the kind of support that we're getting in the city of Fall River. I have support from the Durfee Alumni Association. They ask me every month what the progress is. It's been a lot of months. <laughs> it's been a lot. <laughs> getting pretty bored with that question. My yes, it's been a lot of months. I uh, The Lower Highland Neighborhood Association is also a supporter because the tech building is within their neighborhood. Dana Bonds at the Greater Fall River Art Association. Kathy Castro at the Fall River Art and Cultural Association. Fall River Preservation. Fall River Historical Society. Representative Carol Fiola. Senator Michael Rodericks. Uh, I can also tell you that we have to learn about this together because not recently, just about recently, somebody said to me, what's taking you so long? All you're going to do is take pictures. But we're not, we're not taking pictures. We're creating an art collection. Basically, we're creating a lot, an art collection. So this company, this Tricolor, do you mind if I ask? I don't mean to interrupt. I just have a couple of No, please do. Please do. Because we have new members on the subcommittee, and please interrupt me to ask any questions, because we've been doing this. Uh, Mr. Hyde and myself have been doing this, right? For almost Mrs. 10 years, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kogan was there, too. So we're, we're getting old together, so I just want to make sure that everybody knows. Uh, ask any questions you like. What do you okay. want to know? So clearly this, this process has been going on for a little while. Now, Tricolor in New Bedford yeah. that you mentioned, do they just take the photographs or do they actually do the painting? No, they do it all. They do it all. And if you want to see their work, they did um, uh, the 400th anniversary of Plymouth Plantation, or Plymouth Patuxent mm -hmm. now. But they, they have a, if you go online, and, you, and I'm sure you will, um, there's a whole range of products that they've done. Uh, this gentleman's been a long, a, a, around for a long time. So he, um, he has a, a complete gallery and, and a, a list of products that he's yeah. done. And he's also done work for the New Bedford Willie Museum. Okay. And the space that it's in now, what it's been mentioned that it's not being used, but I also, it was, it was stated in here that it was placed in an auditorium. So, so I assumed an auditorium. So it's, it's on the walls of the auditorium. The walls are completely covered okay. with these murals at 290 Rock. Correct. So and that the is auditorium isn't off. used? No. no. Okay. No, it's... it's storage. It's storage, storage space. Yes. It, okay. I mean, the, the seats are still there. Sure. The wooden seats, old. Um, the stage is a little rickety. And what's going on there? And nothing. nothing. Okay. And we don't see anything in the near well, future. Well, I, 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 you know, after listening to Joyce yeah. with... It's not a restoration, but the it's auditorium. A is, but the auditorium is, so the, the you know the bells go off that at some point maybe we should seek preservation money to take care of the auditorium, because that would be a restoration. That would As be in restoration itself, in itself, outside of this, because at that point, the natural look at those murals that are there would be available. When that happens, are you prepared it, to open to the public? Well, we would. We would, have, we would have to have hours. I mean, like everything else. But, I mean, yeah. there's a lot of stuff at Durfee that people want to come see, and we let them in. I think that that, 
and I'm talking about Mrs. Ponce and I who probably won't be here, but I don't want to speak for her. But we're talking about it takes us a couple of years. Sure. So the preservation, you know, you've been to you've been to, to CPC enough to know. Yeah. And I sat on that board yeah. for a long time. The process is like watching paint dry. Well, look at how for long it took reason. me to get the roof. For a good reason, right, well, exactly. You had MSPB. Uh, MSBA helped right. us with the roof. That's a $6 million project that made that all happen. So I, I, I agree that to, to see it in its natural state is not going to happen for a long time. Mm -hmm. So this is a good alternative to allow people to actually see what they can't see. The real thing. Yeah, it's sort of like a traveling a traveling show exactly. exhibit right. that you could move around. Right. What does and, it cost? Yeah, I was just going to say that. That was, that. My, next, <clears throat> my, first. That was my next question. That's what New Bedford did because they can't, people can't see that the original. canvas collection. Right. Um, and if they try to, when they try to exhibit it, it's going to fray, it's right. going to damage. Which is what they do what that we with a lot, here. a lot of art pieces, right? right? They keep right. the the real ones protected, and yeah. they show the face. Right. How much do you know? How much something like something like this costs? This digital restoration? I don't. I I don't because uh, <coughs> I I know Mr. Pacheco knows the, the process. I imagine it has to go out to bid. It does. It does. And um, um, then we'll know. We'll know. We'll know what, from that process what would what amount of money we're dealing with, because I think that amount of money will also depend on what we want. We want, if we want just canvas at a certain size, if we want, I, I want the whole bill of walks at this point, because if you're gonna do it once, you're, gonna, if, you're not gonna do it again. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're gonna do it this time, I won't be around the next time. Right, but to once do we it did, the next time. so correct me if I'm wrong, but once we, once we did, <laughs> Once we digitize it, it's we digitized, it. right? So at that point, we can make a decision as to the size of it, and yeah. then how, yeah, yeah where yeah, it's right. going, if it's mobile, and then if we decide to dis digitize it a second time, we already have the document. So exactly. I'm guessing exactly the cost is up front to get it done once, yeah. and then after that, it's just reproducing the document. So Ken, what do we have to do? Make a motion to go out for bid, or well, I would say we you have to? I'd say we. Obviously, it's a referral, yeah, right. but that we yeah. go to the full uh, committee okay. and see if they want to explore what it would cost. Now, I, I, we can make some you know, phone calls yeah. to different groups to see, mm -hmm. for instance, what was that worth. There's, there's a whole list here. Yeah. That's, why, that's why I duplicated this, right. because page, when you open this brochure, there's a list of how New Bedford did it yeah. with, the, the, with the support from various organizations. Right. But I can also give you some hope from what I've been able to learn. One of the funding opportunities, especially when you have digital, could be through the library uh, system, could be through the library funding. Second bit of uh, funding is digital commonwealth, digital commonwealth might even go for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Digital Commonwealth is the state of Massachusetts digital library. So if you're looking at specific funding like Dana did for one or two, three pieces of WPA artwork, that's one thing. But if you're looking for Digital Commonwealth, they're looking at the whole ball of wax. Um, there's NIH, there's the National Institute of Humanities. Uh, locally, we could look at one of our distinguished alumni <coughs> who might be willing to um, have his name on a collection of artwork. Wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, but, but as far as what we're talking about going further, I mean, we said to like, refer to the full body, but Maybe do you want to? Uh, I don't know. Maybe don't get know. more information. Table well, it like and then is, if well, you like can, table it and then if you want to table it here, or we if can you want to just refer it to a specific, like if you did it to the April meeting as opposed to the March meeting, you'd have time. It gives have me a month. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So to I have some information and an idea because it would be nice to have a ballpark. Right. 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 
I so that we could have something. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I think that would probably be better. I think that's fine. So why don't we make a motion for front of the April meeting? That would be great. That's April. Second. Tenth. Tenth. Second. Motion Tenth. seconded. And roll call. So what are you looking at for April again? We're April gonna we're gonna present oh. this with a referral oh. Oh. to the full committee. Okay. And then so the we, full yeah. Okay. So we can't really look into how much this digital stuff's gonna cost until we're all together and agree to it. Right. So we're not gonna refer it to March because it doesn't give Kenny enough time to dig up those costs. My so we're guess, gonna give him a month. My guess is looking at the City of Fall River website and the various breakdowns of uh, <coughs> purchasing. Mm -hmm. I think it's over a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I would imagine it's gonna yeah. be if it was two seventy five just to, to clean it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, but who knows? We don't know because no, all, yeah. I think I truly believe it's we have an it's not even if we should we have an obligation we have an obligation as mm -hmm. citizens of the world to protect history in my opinion and certainly to protect art. So it's just, I think about, this is the first I've heard of this, um, but I think uh, it's just, this is the first step. Let's say, I think that digital is a great idea because the reality is we don't have the ability, right, to fix that building. And if we could, that would be amazing. If we could rent it out, you know, for people to, to, to view, that would be great. But the reality is if it took 10 years for this to get this far, I mean, I, I'm not going to put, you know, <clears throat> all my uh, faith in that. So I think this is a good step. So we'll discuss it in the April committee, and hopefully the rest of the committee will agree to go forward and, and get some bids out. And that see sounds good. This possible. And also, and also too, and um, April's going to in the oh, next 10 years. But also, too, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you and I are back on, on this, because <laughs> I, I do remember trying to deal with this. Um, and then I kind of took a hiatus from the school committee, and then I came back. Oh, look, it's and, still here. And now, and, you know, and now we're still, we're still trying to work on it. And I know we've, we've gone back and forth so many, we've gone back and forth so many times on this, and I'm glad that you know this is going to be something that Kenny can put together for us, and then we can hopefully. Uh, see what the full case is. It's not just April. you, it's Mr. Patrico's been there since day one. Yeah. Yep. Day one, when I first went to the CPC over the yes. wa perceived yeah, water damage, that's and, that's what set me off. And also, Mr. Coogan has been involved. Yes, in the yes. Yeah. So, we made the motion. Do we have yep, a roll call? Yeah. Oh, roll call. Mr. Harp? Yes. Ms. Laramie? Yes. Ms. Pereira? Well, yes. I'm going to give you these uh, New Bedford brochures. Thank you. Thank you. And I, like I said, when you open this, I, I folded it specifically so you could see the kind of supporters that mm -hmm. were involved in getting this together. Major supporters, including foundations, trust funds, what have you. Mm -hmm. That's the last one. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Good to see you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work with this. Thank you. So on the, uh, the next Thank you. Um, item on the agenda is the reorganization job descriptions. Chico? Sure. Let me just give you one more piece. I'm sorry, Ken. No, that's okay. That's okay. What are you? I'm just going to hand these. I just got these three. Just these three. I had envelopes too. If you didn't bring one. <laughs> oh no, we're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very school much. School teacher, right? Yeah, school teacher. Take it out of you. Can't get over that, right? You That's can't right. get over that. Right. Gotta be prepared. Bring this stuff nice just in you. case. Thank you. Thank Take you very much. <laughs> Thank you. So oh, we've attached. Seven job descriptions, and on the packet um, Thank you. that um, Thank you. that Deb just handed out, mm -hmm. there's two um, charts, log charts. One is current. Ken, there was. I'm sorry. Yeah, I have it right. Um, one is current and then one is proposed. So the first one is current and the second one with with um, red text that is proposed. 
Um, so if you look at if the current document, um, one of the things I wanted to highlight was on the top corner it says director is responsible for the department. So if you look, each department that has a, a dot in it, so if you look at the first row, the, the above the center line, um, you'll see distribution. That was under one director. Facilities usage was under the same director. Custodial services was under the same director. And safety and security under the same director. So the responsibility for that one director um, was for the majority of the employees we have. Um, and the problem with that is, is that that awesome responsibility of all of those employees and the work that comes with that um, is a daunting task and um, a recipe for disaster or burnout, however you want to put it, um, for that particular person. And um, the idea of the reorg is to break the system down into manageable portions um, and take away any department that looks like it can't be managed as a separate department. Now, again, on that first page, these items that are above the center line, um, the school resource officer, for instance, it's a direct report to me technically, but it really isn't. The resource officers are all controlled by the police department. They answer to the superintendent on day-to-day -day stuff. They would answer to me um, and not answer to me. They would report to me as to what's going on. Um, so that is really not going to change. Distribution, again, was currently under the responsibility of environmental uh, services, that whole division. And it was there only because of, there was no place else to put it. So it was stood under that one person. <clears throat> the supplies were technically going to teaching and learning and going to custodial. So it's, it's both sides of that, that one distribution center, but it doesn't fit in either one of those. So as we move on to the pages, we'll show it where all that stuff lands. The facility manager is a brand new position that was in effect for a little over a year. It helped us open Durfee. That person was there every day um, doing punch list items, uh, taking care of any kind of um, nuances that, were, that came up during construction, but also um, stuff that looking forward would need to be addressed by uh, the different divisions. That position should stay, but it, that was a direct re um, answer to the COO. Facility usage, um, as we grow our opportunities uh, for rentals, we're doing 250, 300,000 a year in rentals. Um, but that part of the, of the job um, or the organization is growing. And um, with the new facilities that are being built at Durfee, and the opportunities at the new Durfee for rentals, I see that number, you know, growing over the years to either double or triple to what it is right now. We do get all the requests, and we're just not ready to take that next leap yet because, you know, the fields are brand new, not finished yet. And when they do get finished, we'd like them to be Durfee use first, and then everyone else after that. Um, so we're, we're still working on that. But that position, again, is under that environmental person and the double duty um, was served by that position. It was a clerk who did the regular work, the day-to-day -day work for all of those departments and on top of that did the facility rentals. So we worked out some flexible time so that person could look at things on Saturdays, go to do rental, show them what they have to do, what they can and can't do. But again, it became a situation where it's a lot of work for that one person to do. What we're saying is maybe we pull some duties out of that position in the new reorg and give that person a little more time to do the facilities work because as it grows, mm -hmm. the need for those extra hours here and there on a flex schedule is gonna come into play. And the last, um, and the last piece of that um, is um, 
the um, groundskeepers that currently sit under me. Um, they used to be part of a, the engineering department, which was facilities engineering. Um, a gentleman, um, Mr. McCluskey, ran that department and picked up a few of those pieces that were out there. That job was eliminated, I want to say, in 18, or maybe 17. 17. Yep. So that position no longer existed. And it got pushed over to, again, people in the environmental section. So one more chunk of people was added. So if we stay in this piece for one more minute, and that would be the director of maintenance. The director of maintenance was a position that we added last year, uh, in March, <clears throat> I think. And that position now has 17 full-time employees. The plumbers, the electricians, the carpenters, the painters um, are all sitting in that department, HVAC. That department is not going to change in the new Rio. So it's staying as a maintenance department. And basically, I look at that maintenance as building, structure. That's the maintenance. Building structure, building maintenance. Trades, so if, trades people. Yeah, it's, it's uh, licensed trades um, in two different categories. And the rest of these items are all current. So all of these employees on that first page are all current employees that we have in the quantities and under the either union or S non uh, titles. <clears throat> if you flip to the next page, and then the piece on the back is just a narrative of what this reorg um, looks like. But the difference, obviously, between the two is that the workload is evenly distributed, or I should say more evenly distributed. Um, across the board. The items that would stay without a director, and would it be direct answer uh, to the COO, would be the distribution piece. Because again, I don't feel it fits under one of the other pieces. Mm -hmm. So it would answer direct. The facility person at Durfee, again, would answer direct. It's kind of a, um, a position that is working with the principal on a day-to-day -day basis for anything that the principal um, feels that needs changing, and then I would meet with that person uh, to go over whatever uh, the school needs were. It'll also be a p p uh, position, now that the, the bugs, so to speak, are worked out of the new building, that this could become um, a more district-related position where if we had issues in some of the schools, it would be one more set of eyes to work with the maintenance director or the custodial director to um, to troubleshoot uh, different issues. The school resource offices, again, they're just reporting. They're not necessarily under the, the COO, but they, they do fit under the facilities and operations. And the last one is the facility usage. Um, again, no director, just that person who would take care of all of our, uh, our usage and rentals. And then the directors um, below that, are uh, the maintenance director. So 17 full-time positions, no changes there. We do have some vacancies in maintenance. Uh, some of the um, skilled trades are uh, more difficult to fill. Uh, some of it is, is um, the market. The market is just so good um, outside of uh, municipal and you know, government that um, these, these skilled trades are in, in high demand and very difficult to pull them away from the dollars that are in the private sector. Um, we'll be working to try and, um, and figure out how we build um, the interest in that area. Director of Custodial Services does not exist today. That was that one title <coughs> that covered everything. So that's a new position. Um, and then the assistant of, you know, Director of Custodial Services, that's another new position. Now, the director of environmental services had an assistant, an assistant director of environmental services. That position became a catch-all. That position became the person that I relied on to do my triage of all maintenance before we hired Manny. 
that position was never filled after the person retired two years now? Two years. Two years ago. So in the, in the uh, custodial department, we would be looking to add those two administrative positions. We currently have a second shift supervisor, which would remain, and then the, the rest of the items uh, stay exactly the way they are. The next item over is a director of transportation. So we currently have a coordinator of transportation. Um, and then we have two clerks and four couriers. So it shows as a position, a new position. However, there is a position that is there now as a coordinator. Um, we believe that the position has grown in size based on the amount of buses we're using, but also on the services that we're being asked to provide. Uh, and um, the dollar amount for that particular department has grown three or four times what it was um, when, we, um, when we changed over with the new schools. So we do a lot of transporting now, uh, and that budget is, has grown quite a bit. The next um, position, again, a position that doesn't exist, that was under the envelope, uh, under the umbrella, I'm sorry, of um, the environmental uh, director, and this would be a new position and the, um, the changes under that position, this is safety and security only, so the sole responsibility would, would be to work with the CIO on some of the safety um, programs, cameras, um, access um, items like that, also um, to uh, work on bus safety. Uh, and other things that we have to do. All of the training, the Alice training, and different training in the schools would fall under this director. We're looking for um, nine full-time security officers. This would put us with a security officer in every building and one floater that we could use um, as a spare uh, to take care of uh, some absences. When we have a need in a specific school now, we can send someone in. We do have a couple of um, security officers that are working in elementary schools, and um, this would allow us to put Durfee back to its full staff, which is where we would take those officers from now uh, and put them in these other locations. But that would bring that department up um, to a minimum of one person at every building. And then the SRO strategy is still the same we have two at Durfee. We have all of our middle schools covered. Our community schools are covered. And then we have um, a floater. Each of those groups take a little bit of schools, a little bit of the load of the schools that are next to them. So um, that's the safety and security side. The next piece is um, Director of Nutritional Services. So that person is a private sector person. Um, that person is not an employee of the district. Um, and then the next item down is the assistant director. Again, a private sector position. Uh, and then we have two supervisors full-time that work for the district. I'm asking for one more supervisor for nutrition. And this one is to work with the um, utility workers. So this would be a supervisor of all the sanitation side of nutrition, cleaning the kitchens, kitchens and cleaning the cafeterias. This will be a supervisor that would bounce around, would also train those utility workers, which is a piece that's been missing, um, and um, be able to provide guidance on, uh, on uh, what needs to be done and what doesn't need to be done. We currently have five full-time utility workers. I'm looking for five additional utility workers. When the utility worker is out, I do not have a replacement. And in the kitchens that have, the cooking kitchens, we need somebody there for the full day, not part-timers. So it would really tax our part-time um, group to the point where um, we would be leaving some schools out to overtime. So this will help us in that respect, but it'll also give us the opportunity to have some leeway. Um, the, um, we have the, the other items in black, 49 full-time positions. 
I'm looking for five more full-time cafeteria employees to work on the food service side. And those employees, again, would be used when needed with a total of 146 part-timers and 48 full-timers. Anytime there's an absence, that position usually stays unfilled. We push the part-timers wherever we can, but a lot of our part-timers are there and they will stay part-timers because that's all they want. They want their four hours a day, three hours a day, whatever it, whatever it is. Some people work 10 hours a week. So it's tough. It's not the same as the custodial side, the part-timers. It's a different group of people that like the hours that they have and those are the ones they want to keep. So there is um, some quite a bit of, of um, additional positions within the nutritional uh, side of the house. And the last um, column is new. So the last column is Director of Campus Services. So we are spending close to $11 million on fields of therapy. Um, between the $11 million investment and the um, landscaping around the new building, which we haven't had to take care of because it's been under contract through new construction. Um, it's a major undertaking. And Durfee looks very good. And the landscaping looks very good. But it's not gonna stay very good with four employees. Um, and to be totally honest, the science behind taking care of the, the um, turf fields is just that. It is not um, a typical landscaper's job. It's something that they need to be trained in. It's something that we would have to send people for that particular training. It's equipment that needs to be purchased. Some equipment is coming with the work, with the uh, projects that are running right now that we've built into the construction projects. So some of the new equipment is already going to be there waiting. But without the additional employees, it's going to be very difficult. The goal for this department is to take more and more of the landscaping work for the individual schools away from custodians to allow custodians to stay inside the buildings and do that work. Right now, all those custodians, all the buildings that have um, good size areas around them, that work is done by the custodians. Most of it that's touching the buildings, the big fields we do take care of with um, the landscape crew uh, and the groundkeepers crew, but that, we're hoping to change that so that the custodial piece will be front and center for the custodians to do and they will no longer have to deal with that outside work. If you notice all of the new buildings um, where they used to be um, mulch and some landscaping, it's grass because we don't have the ability to get all of that work done. And you, we can't do that work with four people and it's a lot of work for custodians to do that on top of what they have to do. So the goal would be to grow this department to a point where they take care of all the landscaping for the district. And I say that the goal because um, being on the city side, I dealt with the park department. 15 employees, 17 employees, 176 acres of grass to cut, three rainy days in the summer, and you're not cutting grass and you're not taking care of things. And it's no different on this side. We're over 100 acres of, of grass to cut when we total up all the schools and for four people to do that and do the other work that they have to do. So this outside work, this campus um, <coughs> department will also take care of the outside trash barrels. We'll take care of the maintenance in the parking lots. We'll be under their work would be the striping of the lots. They may not necessarily may not be for these eight employees that we're talking about, but it'll be under that director. So that director will have responsibilities um, based on that work, the exterior of the building work, um, but not touching the building. So parking lots, uh, sidewalks. Right now, the custodians do all of the snow removal. At Durfee, it's a monumental task. There's an awful lot of sidewalks, a heck of a lot more than there ever was at the other building. This work is also work that the custodians are going to continue to do where they can, but the groundskeepers will have the ability, will have the equipment to do some of this work 
um, to lend them a hand um, with the three or four miles with sidewalks that we have at the new building. And uh, the job descriptions, um, without going over them one by one unless you'd like to, are, um, are basically very unique in the work that needs to be performed by each one of the directors. Um, but it is very um, it is very equal in um, what we're expecting of them. We're expecting them to evaluate their employees. We're expecting them to um, provide professional development to all the employees. Um, there's um, there's a lot of things that they're going to be able to do that we couldn't get done with such a small group of, um, of administrators um, that we have to deal with. And is there a, open it up to any questions? Yeah. So Kenny, what kind of sticks out first? Yes. What kind of sticks out to me is um, the, the campus services yep. and how small the departments want to be in comparison to these other departments with 117, 216, um, even 42 with safety and security. Um, I don't know how to say this without getting into details, but salary-wise, like how do we well, support paying somebody with eight staff members the same kind of salary that has 117 and 216. Well, I would look at, I would look at, again, and I, as, as we were putting this thing together, the one thing that, the one thing that um, I say looks different than most of the other parts of FRPS is that some of these are specialized pieces. So if you look at the supervision in a regular building, you have your principal and you have vice principals and you have deans. So the principal's role is to oversee that whole thing. So I would say that my role here is that principal and I'm overseeing all of these departments. Now, again, without going into detail, there's well over 300 employees here. Mm -hmm. Bigger than any department we have. But the salaries are not comparable. I don't understand why, because I'm sitting here. And I what I'm saying is, is that the salary is not based on employees. Because if it was, things would look totally different in FRPS. The complexity of things is, is what things have to be based on dollar-wise. This person may only have to evaluate eight at the beginning, and I may come next year and say I need two more. Maybe only ten. But the complexity of the rest of the work that that person has to do, the planning, the fields, the constant <coughs> testing, the GMAX testing, which is new, to be sure that the fields are safe for our kids to, to play on, to know when that stuff has to happen. <coughs> to have the repairs done on all of these fields as we go along. Yeah. We do have the Durfee complex, but we also have <coughs> pus that is an artificial surface. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to build fields at Morton, um, you know, at uh, Talbot, I'm sorry. We have two more fields to build at Durfee, grass fields. All of that stuff has to be maintained. This crew is the, is the crew that's going to do the, 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 uh, the line painting, the striping in these, in these uh, different facilities. Uh, and be sure that they're ready for game day. With the, with the ability to have artificial surface, rain is no longer that big factor that we always had with the, with the grass fields, but we still have maintenance to do on those fields after so many hours um, of what needs to happen on the fields. Um, it also encompasses you know, the, taking care of the scoreboards or taking care of the bleachers or taking care of all of that work that's outside of the building. Will there be some interdepartmental you know, work going on? Absolutely. Electrician's going to have to help with the scoreboard. But the person who's running this department is going to have to 
plan their work well, especially knowing that you are going to have some bad weather days that you're not going to be able to work and how we're going to work around that, where this manpower is going to be and how we're going to take care of 16 buildings when we're only taking care of four now. That's a big change for this group as to how much they're going to do. Whoever leads this group is going to have to be very good at their job. He or she will have an awesome responsibility knowing they got an $11 million investment right off the top to take care of. And it's a showpiece. And it's used all the time. So I, I look at, I don't know, I don't know if it's equal. Because if we're going to count heads, it's definitely not. I agree with you 100%. It's not. I just, I look at maintenance and I say, the amount of work that maintenance has to plan is no different than this one here. But it's a specialty. Okay? There are only two people in the district, three counting one of the plumbers, that has the ability to plan some of the work that's going to go on this summer. And it's a specialty. So he's, he's only doing 17 when you look at those other ones. But the work is specialized. And the work is, is critical, and the work is very expensive. And I equate that along with campus, along with the security side. We've invested millions of dollars in equipment, cameras, turkey alone. The work that we're doing across the district, those positions are not going to necessarily, can't necessarily be based on the amount of people that they supervise. It has to be based on the size and the complexity of the work that they have to deal with. And, and that's the only, the justification putting this together um, is what I used. I, I, I need to see that these are specialties. Now, I'm not saying that each and every one of these people make the same amount of money. I, I think that we give it a range, like we would do with most other jobs, right. because our principal at Durfee is not being paid the same as the principal in one of our other schools. Right. For a reason, you know, because the, the complexity of running Durfee High School is a lot different than it is from running a smaller elementary school or, or a small element, um, a middle school. Mm -hmm. But it, there is a certain amount of talent that the person has to have regardless of the size of the building. Um, and again, the amount of, of employees on each one of these, it varies quite a bit. I look at nutrition, but the bulk of nutrition people part-timers and their hours of the day are pretty compact you know we're and no evals either right no evaluations for part-time uh, no evals for part-time right that's right. Right. right so when you i mean i again these but this I mean, is obviously the, big the person who has 101 people under him have you, they're not responsible for doing all those evaluations. Right. So if you look at clearly. that, if you look at that department, we have yeah. a director. Yeah. We have mm -hmm. assistant director. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the only department that yeah. has an assistant. Yeah. And then we have a second shift. Mm -hmm. So you'd be looking at it that should be group. splitting up evaluations. 30, 30, yeah, 30 which 40, says whatever however way it works out, yeah. they would be bringing mm -hmm. that number into some control. The supervisors do not eval, right? Just the directors. The supervisors oh, I mean, will. I'm sorry, yes, I'm in the yes. But nutrition the nutrition director is not an employee of us. Right, you know, I know so, that. So we would be doing, they would be doing the evals. Right. The supervisor would be doing the evals. And the, the nutrition director obviously will have a seat at the table. Okay. But will not be doing the eval. It All needs right. to be done by a, an employee of, of the district. So supervisor, right. this is the only department that a supervisor would be doing the evals and that's... Exactly. A supervisor, well, the third shift supervisor and the custodial side would be How many, I'm, I'm, now I'm bouncing back to, yep. to custodian, how many in the second shift? The second shift is the largest shift we have. So it would be two-thirds of the force of the custodial staff is okay. on the second shift. But that second shift supervisor would not take that whole load. So when it comes eval time, that, that assistant director uh -huh. needs to step up. The assistant director's job the way I see it would be that person who's going to um, maybe not necessarily have that start at the same time as the director. Mm -hmm. Maybe it shifts a little bit so that they can pick up two or three hours the of end. the second shift so that they can get to know those second shift employees 
and give the second shift supervisor a hand when it comes time to eval. How many second shift employees? And two thirds of that number. Two thirds yeah. of the like one seventeen. Yeah. Right. What is it? It's like a sixty-five. Yeah. I was going to say about yeah, sixty-ish. Exactly. Um, sorry. Yeah. So, in in the uh, job descriptions, I'm going to bounce over there yeah, in sure. a minute, if you don't mind. No. Um, it just all. I only found in one of the job descriptions, uh, it it was um, it mentioned supervisory experience, and that was on the director of maintenance. Mm -hmm. I didn't really see a lot of supervisor under the uh, required qualifications aspect. I didn't really see supervisory experience, and um, I kind of think it's a big deal to have that on there. Agreed. That was supposed to be on there. And it was an oversight. It's got yeah. to gotta be a typo. Yeah. Right? Because okay. we talked about that in a meeting where we worked right. with this. And, yes. And, and, I mean, and it just I'm didn't travel over. That's, I take done. responsibility. No, no. And also, Kenny questioned, so it's yes. going to be on there, right? Yes. yes. So it's going to be on there. Mm -hmm. So um, who... I, I, I saw a lot of monitoring uh, time, right, overtime. Yeah. Who approves the overtime? So is the it individual you? director would approve it if it's a regular, if it's a regular event. So, for instance, an overtime situation that's not related to work, that can't be done because okay. of um, maybe absenteeism. So let's just say it's a, an event on a Saturday for a rental. So that overtime would be part of the rental. I would see that piece when it comes through. Okay. So and so is renting this building. We need a, um, a security person. We need two custodians, and we need a groundskeeper. So those items would be put into the log as overtime needed. Mm -hmm. It would be bid out to see who gets it, and that would be approved as part of the project and paid for. Right. Out what, of what does bid out mean? Um, the Can opportunity to work. Process? So the opportunity to work that event. Does it go in it order? It goes right. Okay. It goes in order. Right. Yeah. So if you got it today, you can't get it. it it'll okay. be the next. Right. And it's all unfair. And and what we've what we've also. It, I, I want I don't want to say it's even because a place like Durfee has so many, right. you know that by the time you get through with Durfee the list of people mm -hmm. that work would stay in house until it they couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. But Durfee has enough events that eventually outside people right. from other schools are going to get that work. So that's how that's what I mean by the bid process. Mm -hmm. It's not automatic. So, but it does come through. It does come through on the okay. workload. We have three openings, and I would get a phone call from a supervisor saying, "How do you want to cover this? Mm -hmm. You know, do we want to bring part timers in and give them each four hours mm -hmm. to make up, you know, at least?" But you have two? a say. I mean, but it doesn't say. Yes, it's not a. It's no, it's not. We do have a say. Yes. Okay. And, and with an assistant director, obviously the idea would be to um, teach them, show them, have them follow a procedure that's very easy for the director, the assistant director, the um, night supervisor. And by the time it gets to me, have an understanding that this is the process. We're doing it this way all the time. So there's never a question. Mm -hmm. Okay? I would say that... 85% of the time it's happening right now, mm -hmm. that way. It needs to be 100%. Right. So, so question, seeing the majority, right? So yes. we're saying two-thirds, okay. Yep. Is this second, I'm sorry, this assistant of custodial services that yes. you have this new position, is yes. that something that is going to be foreseen as second shift? No, that, that is strictly an assistant. So, so basically so you're, going to have, you're going to have the director, who's gonna work the regular seven to whatever day. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have the assistant that we're gonna look at shifting a touch mm -hmm. so that they have some overlap on the second shift and then the second shift supervisor is okay. strictly second shift. And they would work, again, they may have a little overlap with the first shift just because by contract, the seniors are all on the first shift. Okay. By design, by their design, um, and we've talked about how we might wanna work on that, you know, during negotiations. But the first, the, the senior custodians are on the first shift, so it's nice to have a transition from that first shift to second shift. Mm -hmm. Now, you're going to have the assistant director, but we do have 15, 16 buildings they're going to get to. Right. So it would be nice if both of those, that assistant overlaps to the second and the second overlaps to the first a bit 
so that we can make sure that the contact is made with that first shift senior as to what didn't get done during the day, what, mm -hmm. whatever reasons it couldn't get done during the day, and try and fit that all in. Okay. And the super, that, that second shift supervisor, uh, are they hands-on or they are, are they traveling around? They travel around. They're not, they're not, a, they're um, not hands They're not on like a working form. Or working or anything. Form. No, no, okay. no. They do train. Right. So okay. they would train. We have a new person coming in on the second shift that we would train them. That person would be that person training them or the assistant or the director, depending on, you know, the need. I'm good for <laughs> Okay, Ken, so what are we, uh, are we looking to tonight refer this or do you want to? I would like it referred. Okay. Um, again, we will make those corrections. Whatever the corrections okay. that need to be made on the um, yeah because the, on the, the ones, drafts. So the ones you just gave us tonight yes. are, are the same document. With should I say all the bullet points are the same? Is it's just a different different format? Yeah, they're different. Yeah, they're, they're, they're different. The ones you got tonight are the most current ones. Yes, but yes. they're different. So yes. I need to go back. It's and, not just the format. Oh, I thought and, it was just the format. And the and, no, and bullet some number. Bullets. There's some bullets that are different. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. Right, I'm bullet number three on the maintenance job description uh -huh. should travel to the other. That's the one that didn't get carried over to the others. I'll, I'll fix that. We also on which to, one? May I fix a couple other things? Yeah. No, okay. Yeah. That's the one that range. talks about experience supervising in a collective bargaining environment with a number of years preferred. It's in the maintenance director's. Uh, right. Yeah, one of them in. in in the ones that I want to call this is the old one, right? We'll that, the one that's two pages the one is, the, is, the, is old the old one. The one that's um, double sided, that's double -sided is okay. the one that I handed out today. All right, perfect. <clears throat> yeah. So the one on the double pager, the one that has both sides. Right. That's a new well, one. The, yeah, no, I got that. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't. So, so let me just ask there's a uh, Three or more years of managerial experience with a collective bargaining environment. That's not put back on here. The which, new one. On which one? Uh, it, sorry, maintenance. Sorry. Un under required qualifications, yes. it's not bullet number three. The oh, top. there it is. Okay, it's just worded differently. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Sorry about that. We need to clean up the language about the managers and moms over time as needed and ensures equitable distribution of overtime. That's yeah. in the maintenance, but it's not the same language in the others. Okay. So that needs to be and also, too, what uh, uh, Ms. Lyrie was talking about as far as the that eva that. evaluations, Tom? That, that language travels across, but I'll make sure it's the same. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Right. Any motions on the table? Motion to refer. Is there a second? On a second. Roll call. Mr. Hart? Yes. Referring to March. Ms. Lyrie? <laughs> Mark with to March. 20th? March, right? Yes. March. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Ms. Perrara. Yes. Uh, any new business? <coughs> no new business. Uh, Mayor, a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Uh, roll call. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Larry? Yes. Ms. Perrara? Yes. Have a good night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.